Using drop-down fields in your DocuSign forms can guarantee the accuracy of the response you'll get from your signers and helps create signing experience that's great because it's faster for people to select an option rather than having to type text. Unfortunately, I see a lot of DocuSign users forget to use those drop-downs or use them completely incorrectly. So I wanted to make this video to teach you how to use a reasonable drop-down field in DocuSign so that your forms get easily completed by your signers in no time. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Sofian Saudi. I'm the founder of Solisend Consulting, where we help companies with tons of paperwork grow by automating systems so they can serve more customers better and faster with fewer resources. If you want to learn more, you'll find the link in the description of this video to book a consultation with one of our automation consultants. And if you're new to DocuSend, I strongly suggest that you download our free DocuSend Mastery Cheat Sheet because it will help you understand how to automate all your forms and documents. All the links of the things that I've mentioned in the video, you can of course find them in the description just down below. Now let's go back to our drop-down fields. For today's example, we're going to build a drop-down field that contains the list of all the US states. It's probably the field that we use the most when building templates for our clients. So when building your forms, if you want your signers to provide you with a predefined answer, then just use a drop-down. Drop-downs are similar to radio buttons, but as you can see here, they take much less space on the page. And if you're not sure how to use radio buttons, check out my video on how to use radio buttons. Uh, it's linked in the bio. Now, let me show you how I built my drop-down state. I simply rent on Google and Googled, I think, comma separated list of US states. And then I found this website. Then I copied the list of all my states that were that are here, pasted this in Microsoft Word, did a control F to replace my commas by semicolons, and then I copied that text inside of a drop-down that I just dragged and dropped, right? So I just took a drop-down here and then rent into the series and pasted everything in there. And this is what the dropdown looks like in the end. You can see I have all the states and they are separated with a semicolon. Now it's the same thing for the list of states uh, that's fully spelled out. Just did a Google search, copied everything that I was getting, made sure I had a semicolon in between and then just did that. There's also a slower way you can do it. You can just create a dropdown and click on edit value and then just manually add each state. Alabama, Alaska, blah, blah, blah. I mean, but I don't really know why you would want to do this. And so what I've done is because I know that I'm going to be reusing this field in many, many forms, I saved this drop down as a custom field so that I can reuse my field in other templates and envelopes in the future. So once you've built your field, and it doesn't have to be a drop down, you can do this with any field you're building, just click on that field and then click on save as custom field, give it a meaningful name, so US States Demo, and then click on save, and then from here, you will find this in the custom field tab of your list of custom fields. And so here, there you go. My, my field is here. I'm just going to delete it because I've already got that and I don't need an additional one. But actually when you save it, make sure that you click on share so that other users of your DocuSign account can also use it and then you click on save. Another great thing about using drop downs is that they can be used in formulas because you can assign a value to each option. For example, in this particular question here, the signer is asked to provide an ID and the signer will need to provide additional information only if passport or driver's license is selected because birth certificate don't expire. And since DocuSign doesn't allow us to make the same text field conditional to two options, whether the user has selected passport or driver's license, by the way, if you're not familiar with conditional logic, I suggest that you watch my tutorial on conditional logic after you watch this video. It's linked in the bio as well. The workaround is to assign a numerical value to our options. And by assigning the same value to the options that should trigger the field, we can work around the rule of DocuSign not allowing us to set up two different conditions on the same text field. Let me explain. So if we go in here, uh, we can see that my passport has the value 2, driver's license has value 2, but birth certificate has value 1. This allowed me to create a formula field that's going to read the numerical value of the option selected and say that if the value of that field equals two, then I can create a condition that says that this particular field is going to be conditional. And the way that I do this is by entering a one here. 
one doesn't have to do anything with the numerical value that I'm entering. It just means that my formula is true. So if the statement that I've made, which was this field equals two, then my formula is true. True is one in coding language. So I'm adding a one here and then selecting my field to confirm this is the one that I want to make conditional. I hope that I didn't lose you. Let's do a quick test. So as you can see now, I haven't selected the ID that I want to provide. But as soon as I select passport, then I will have a value here, which is one, because my formula is true. And then my expiry date field becomes required. If I select driver's license, nothing should change because the driver's license still has a value number two, which triggers the text field. But if I select birth certificate, then my formula is no longer true. It says zero that the document and formula is returning, which means that no, we're not going to be collecting the expiry date for that document. Now, as a quick bonus, let me show you how to quickly generate a list of numbers because it's another common use case for drop-down fields. I normally use this website, pinetools.com slash generate list numbers, and I've also linked this in the bio. Now, let's say that I wanna generate a list of numbers between the range one to 25. So I'm gonna say first number is one, last number 25, the step in between is one, of course. I don't want to add the leading zero, but I do want to add text after each number. And I want to add my semicolon so that I don't have to do my word uh, transformation to make it compatible with DocuSign. I don't want this on separate lines. I want everything on the same line and I'm going to click on generate. So now that I've got my list of numbers, I can go, I can copy this, go back to my DocuSign template or envelope, use a add a drop down, go to my series and paste this and now I'm gonna have all my different options just right here. Another option if you don't want to use the generate numbers a list of numbers is to generate options using ChatGPT so you can then just paste this inside of your drop down and again don't forget to save your drop down. And before we wrap up one last thing that you always want to make sure that you do is that you rename your labels your field labels because if you don't rename your field labels like this one you will not be able to automate your forms and that's what we're here for right for to automate our workflow so what does automating forms mean well what do you usually do with the information that you collect in forms once your signers have completed them do you sometimes need to enter that information in the field or look at the PDF and then type in or copy paste what was entered by your signers inside of a spreadsheet or another program or database? If the answer is yes, then giving a label to your fields will allow DocuSign to send any information in the fields directly where you would normally type it manually yourself. And yes, you've heard me correctly. It's automatic. That means no more data entry. Let me show you an example. So here's an example. To the left, I have a completed DocuSign form where selections were made. You can see that I have responses of that particular form here directly inside of my database. But this information wasn't entered by copy-paste. This was done using automation instead of manual data entry. And you can only do this if you rename your field labels because otherwise you don't know what field contains what information it's impossible for you to map the data and automate the data flow now whether you want to automate your forms today or in the future is not the question you'll ultimately end up doing it the question is more when are you going to do it because this is the only way to make the business scalable, eliminate errors and save time. And if you want our help to automate your workflow, you can book a consultation with one of our automation consultants. Our services include templates, e-signature integration and training to help you say goodbye to manual tasks and paperwork for good. I will see you in the next one. Ciao.